Really? Yes. No, I didn't. She doesn't tell me. Thanks. Oh, that's nice of her. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote a really good composition. Sounds terrible, but Oh, yeah, so I have the scarf you can. How do you 
bring her away. Well, I had them with me. Oh yeah, huh? I had them with me in the car, and it could start because oh. they were in the car. Oh, yes. But he's doing, he did this once, and he didn't have his uh, driver's license or his wallet or the keys. Oh wow! Because I had them in my purse, and we got in the car together. He drove off, let me out, and yeah. he took off, locked the car. And then he couldn't get, couldn't get back in and couldn't come and pick me up. Oh. Uh -oh. So it's going to happen the same thing tonight. Uh, so he's going to come back and get the library, keys? But I caught him. So he's coming back. He's going to try that. He's on his way down to the library downtown. Oh, well, that's, that's where his meeting is. Yeah, it's not that far. <laughs> that's the only but I thing figured that he just got out of the car and shut the door. <coughs> and then he wouldn't be able to come back. How far away is he? Downtown, yeah. Oh. He goes down to the library for his meeting. That's the only bad part about those keys. For a woman, it's not bad. She can throw it in your purse and forget it. But that's where I always have yeah. mine. But, and men, but men I men took them in to get his Frosties oh. at Wendy's. So that's why I have the keys. Otherwise, he would have come. That's our Tuesday night. You mean your encouragement to come to choir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> he benefits from most, though, because I only eat about this much, and then he gets the rest. Oh, you share it? No. Oh. He has his own, and I have this much of mine, and he gets the rest. Oh, and that one, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Okay, green card. Green card. 
Okay, so uh, here we go. First things first, you gotta make sure the chord is stacked in thirds. Remember that means three notes that are each on a line or on a space. Switch over here. Three notes that are on a, all each on a line and each or each on a space. So which of these three is the stacked chord, stacked in thirds? The one in the middle. That's right, that's pretty easy to see, right? Yeah. Here, this distance is too big, and here, this distance is too big. But, spoilers, these are all C major triads. They are just flipped around, where one note is on the bottom that used to be in the middle, and so, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's step 1A. Step 1B is, if it's not stacked in thirds, you have to move those notes around so that it is. Because in music, the chords are often not stacked nicely in thirds. So you have to actually move the notes around. So if you see here, this down here is a fourth, this up here is a fourth, and this is a fourth. So we need to take these notes, B, E, and G sharp, and move them around so that they make a nice stack of thirds. So I can do that with exactly one step. Uh -huh. Can someone tell me what that step is? Well, in the first one, if you take the B and put it on top of the, the G. Yes, that's right. So Donna said, take the B and put it on top of the G. So I'm going to go G, sorry, E, G sharp, B, and the B is right on top. So all I did was whoop, moved it right up there. Follow me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how about this one? I could do this in one change, but you might see another way of doing it with two changes. Somebody else, tell me what what I need to do to make this into a nice stack of thirds. Oh, so the one change is the easy. Yes, what's Maybe that? Maybe do the opposite of what you did on the other one. Move the B flat to be oh, underneath. Yes, yeah, right. that's right. And now it's three notes that are each on a space. The stack. Now, if I move these two notes both up, I can achieve the same thing. Now the whole chord will be an octave higher than, than before, and they'll all be line notes. Okay? And then last one, Steve, what's the one change I need to make? Um, move the E to the top. That's right. You've got good eyes to see that from where you're at. If you, I'll, I'll give you a chance to put your paper in the binder so that you don't have to do that. Okay, cool. Everyone following me so far? Yes. Can I get a yes? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. Is that not facing Okay, so that's easy. Step two. Now it gets a little trickier, but this is, this should be reviewed at this point, but let's do it anyway. Um, we've got, to identify the root, which is the bottom or lowest note. This is, might be a new terminology for you, root, the root of the chord. Really important that it's called the root because it's gonna become the name of the chord later. So all you have to do right now is circle the root of each of these chords and then identify, it. identify that note. Raise your hand if you're done. Kismet, first one. Mm -hmm. E. Nancy, second one. Yeah. Roxana, last one. E. Excellent. Okay, and now we just go ahead and identify the interval between the root and the middle note. Again, this is in a nicely stacked chord of, of thirds. Otherwise, if you identify the, the root or the lowest note and the middle note of one of those chords that has a fourth in it instead of thirds, you're not gonna get the right harmony. So um, we just need to identify the interval, okay? What is the interval? What is an interval? Remind me, week six. The difference between, the, the space between two notes. Great, yes, the space between two notes. So um, if it's a major third, the chord is a? Major chord. Major chord, easy. If it's a minor third, the chord is minor. Yep. So now go ahead and identify the chords that we've labeled so far, the ones where we flip stuff around, everything that you see on this page. 
identifying the first three examples are super easy. What are they? All of them? C major. They're all C major. So you could do C, capital M, capital C, capital M, capital C, capital M to save time if you want. Or you could just do capital C. But capital and lowercase c's look very similar to whatever you want, want to do there. Okay, now how about this one? We moved the B up top. So then the bottom note was what? E, G. So the, and it's E to G sharp is a major or minor third. You can take out that keyboard, or if you've got some good visual memory. Which ten, two, three, Which ten? Major? Major, that's right. So it's E major, easy. Mm -hmm. All right, now with this one, we put the B flat on the bottom. So that means the root is B flat, and B flat to D flat is minor. Minor third. Thank you. So we're going to say B flat, little m. Charles, I'm sorry. Can you refresh my memory about minor and major? Minor thirds are three half steps. Major thirds are four half steps. The, the way I like to remember, because these th the three and four is kind of like, why is it three, why is it four? Well, it's a third, right? So three is going to be one of them, so that's helpful. And then if you think three is one and you know four is the other, four is major, four is bigger, more, you know, major means bigger, yeah. Minor means smaller. Okay, and then last one over here. Um, Steve. The root of this chord was an A, you said? Oh. And A to C sharp is what? Major. I asked Steve. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. He, you knew it, right, Steve? It's major, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to get the whole keyboard out, but yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, and then over here, this one is nicely stacked. All of these are nicely stacked. And you already identified the roots. Okay. Roxana, what's the first one? B, B to D sharp. Major. Correct. Okay, F to A. Anybody? Donna? Second major. Yes. Kismet, last one. E to G sharp. Some people say the two notes is a dyad, 
But really, two notes can easily represent harmony. Because if I play for you a major third, you have some context of the harmony. Right. As soon as I add another note, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's still, you know, you still started with a major third. It's still a harmony. Okay. So Charles. Yep. If you go back up to the other note, like the example you drew was the F to C, so that was easy. But go to the first one. Oops. I deleted all of it. Go ahead. No, 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 that's okay. But the, I'm talking about the ones that are on the screen. Oh, okay. Right, so your example was the one in the middle, down in the bottom row, last row. Right, that's what you drew. And you said F to C. Yes. But if you go over to the your left, right, that was the perfect fifth. So what's that? What's what? That one. No, this one? the one on the left. That's the, the one in the middle is the perfect fifth. Yeah, this is a perfect. Yes. That's so a perfect fifth. What's that one? Also a perfect fifth. It is, okay. Yeah. Because I it's didn't... seven. Right? Exactly. Like it's kind of seven, okay. Yes. Lucky number seven. I didn't throw any curveballs at you. Okay, because I'm trying to understand a, what would make one of those, oh, it would be because it's a half step up or a half step down. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, but, the top notes would be a half step higher or lower. But in the in the one on your left, right, the top note, no, that's your right. The I don't know, I'm kind of facing this way. Left, your left. Yes, Here? Yeah, this yeah. one right there. Okay. The top note is F sharp. Yeah. So you can't go up a half step and not be F. Uh, you could do F double sharp. Ah. And then that's what would make it augmented. Exactly right. Huh. So here's this. <laughs> F. Or sorry, B, uh, D sharp, F sharp, and now B, D sharp, F double sharp. It's all about context. Yeah, okay. It's all about context. If someone was writing for me an atonal piece of music, meaning a piece that doesn't have a key, and they wrote a double sharp for me, yeah. I would be very upset. Because I'd say, what, why would, how will you justify making me have to do this with my mind yes. to play your music? Play, write F, E flat, G. Or sorry, B, E flat, G. Right. Easier to read. Got you it. know, there's a time and a place for double sharp. Debussy is a major offender. <laughs> major. If you know his famous piece, Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn, which has a beautiful solo, flute solo, it, there's a ballet choreographed to it. Um, there's a whole section. I forgot what key it's in. I think it's in C flat major. Oh, yeah, and that's because the harp plays the most important role. And what is the natural key of a concert grand harp? It's actually C flat major. Oh. So he made every other instrumentalist cave to the, harp. to the harp. So that means the person playing, I think there's a piano part, I don't know, but everybody's reading double flats because oh. they're in C flat major thanks to the harp. Wow. Okay. okay, thank you for going back to that. Yeah, no problem. Does a chord have to be stacked in thirds in order for it to be a major or minor triad? The answer is no. Correct. Because we just went over some chords where there's a fourth. So the chords in the beginning were, were all C major, right? C, E, G. And one was E, G, C. The other one was G, C, E. They're all C major. No, but two. two. Which is interesting. To calculate the, which to, is need, to need the chords is hot to fix that. Unless you can mentally do all that in your head. Yeah, you could do, yeah. Once you get real good, you do it in your head, yeah. Okay. But you go through the steps that are on that page. Yeah. Now this is really interesting that I just thought about on the top of my head. Remember, we were talking about major and minor. Major has a major third on the bottom. Minor has a minor third on the bottom. But both harmonies contain what? Both a major and minor third. Because it's seven, right? Seven mm -hmm. half steps to the fifth, so three plus four, or four plus three, right? So you think, well, there must be some significance to us hearing the two notes lower. The two lower notes, that makes it major. And over time, it sounds major, and then this sounds maybe moodier and mysterious, whatever. But then as soon as you invert, which is taking the root and moving it around in the chord. Wouldn't it follow then that 
the mood changes of the harmony because now there's a different interval on the bottom. In fact, in the first inversion of C major, C, E, G is the root position. First inversion, C goes from the bottom to the top. Now it's E, G, C. The first interval you hear is what? A minor third and then a fourth on top. So somewhere deep in our brain, our own mind is taking that C and relating it to these two notes down here in the same way that we were hearing it before with it on the bottom. Isn't that kind of cool? So the rule is not the lowest interval is what you use to determine the mood. It's not that. It's way more complicated than that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You would think, you would think me teaching a, a music theory 101 after getting a master's in music, I'd be bored. But I'm so stoked. <laughs> okay, new terms, root position. I just said these first inversion, second inversion. There's three notes. That means there's three possibilities. Root on the bottom, root in the middle, root on top. Root on the bottom, root position. Root in the middle, first inversion, root on top, second inversion. And that's all we're going to do about that right now. We don't really I, need to know I don't more. understand what you just said about inversion. So what is an inversion? It's in dance, yeah, it's a handstand, right? Yes. You, you take your head and it. you put it down there. So instead, so I'm, I'm C major. My feet are C, my <coughs> hips are E, and my head is G. <laughs> as soon as you put my head on the, I do a headstand, I've got G, E, and C, right? <laughs> TMI. Yeah, well, I want to <laughs> use the note. So yeah. is, it, is, it, is it where we moved, where we moved it one time, we moved it from the bottom to the top, that's yeah. the first That's the First, first inversion. Because the middle note became the bottom note. But when we had to move yes. it two times, yes. the top note became, okay, got it. You got it? Yes. Like what? I said, it, we're going gonna, we're gonna to look at it right here, just as practice. So go ahead and on your own try to do these. So those, those chords when they're played with the with the the notes converted, do they sound the same or do they sound do they sound different? Well, you, you tell me. <clears throat> they sound the same. Yeah, they sound the same. In classical music, it's uh, there's a uh, they get real complicated with how they're used. If you end a piece, I mean, in a simple set setting, you can understand this. That sounds pretty complete, but if I do this, it sounds less complete, because I'm kind of hanging on this note. Mm -hmm. So the root note's important because it completes the completes the completes the completes the the notion, right? But tonically, they're the same. They sound the same, yeah. but it's a sequence in which they're played in the song or the melody, right? Yeah, uh, it, yeah, or not maybe not sequence, but it's kind of where you end up, or how you how yeah. resolve the, how you resolve the tension in the notes. Yeah. Yo, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, Steve, take a second, try to do all, uh, what are these? Nine chords right here, because we will be using them.
So hopefully you've turned everything into root position that needs to be. There's only four that need to go into root position. And now you're going to start identifying the root and then identify the interval between the bottom and the middle node, or the root and the middle node. When you're ready, you can check your work. Yeah. Awesome. The Charles Old Six Week Music Theory Program. <laughs> Results guaranteed for your money. Well, this is pretty Except cool now that you know the formula. It makes it easy. Not that I can do it fast in my head. Sure. But over time and with practice, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we'll I get it of times, I could probably start to do it just like I can add and subtract and divide and multiply in my head. But yeah. Um, now we know the formula. Yes. And and you have a more or less one page of paper you can rip out and you have that formula easily accessible, hopefully. <clears throat> doing that and counting the half steps. Be my guess. Okay, if you haven't finished yet, go ahead and copy it out so you have it. Because it will be nice to have. There's three minor chords. The rest are major. some sharp chords and some flat chords. What song could possibly have all of these in it? Hmm. Can I read this? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Donna? Yeah. <coughs> okay, now you can turn that page. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, color. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a direct quote from a whole train of Okay, so this is missing uh, a couple things, but I like I liked it because it had the colors correct, and then it also had a very simple, easy to look at picture. Because usually this is a very daunting, complicated, ugly thing. They put the staff 
and all the sharps and flats for each one, which is really important to know. But uh, this is the simplified version. First thing I want you to do, we need to complete it a little bit. See how there's all these flat keys here mm -hmm. and no sharp keys? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are sharp keys, but you don't know it. So we actually need to write in a few other keys. We'll just kind of write them in underneath. These are called the enharmonic keys. They sound the same, but they are spelled differently. So we have C flat major. That's the extension of the flat all the way to the end. There is no F flat. Okay. Then there's F sharp major over here. And then C sharp major right there. Okay. Got it? So um, we're going to learn why, why the heck we have a circle of fifths. What good is it? Uh, important note, these chords in the middle that are all grayed out here are minor keys. So every, you know, there's 12, you know, you can count them right now. There's 12 pitches here. There's 12 in the color. So there's also 12 minor keys. And that's why we have 24 prelude and fugues by Bach, because he wrote 24 in each of the major and minor keys, and then he did it again. He wrote two books <laughs> for his children. <laughs> he had some 18 kids or something like that, maybe more. I think it was more than that. It was more, but a lot of them passed away when they were like just Isn't born. like the least three of them ended up being important musicians in some, in some respect oh, or some? The funniest part about the Bach children is like, yes, several of them went on to be amazing composers that we still play their music. But then the third generation, um, his name is uh, uh, like three. He's got three letters in the acronym. C C and the, E. No, that's a no. that's a son, but a grandson. It's like W T F. I remember that. It's it was like it's not W T F because that would be really funny if it's like that. Whatever. But his he's really funny because he said. There's like diminishing returns with the number of generations or something like that. So like he was the last composer and the only grandchild that wrote music yeah. was that Bach, yeah, that we know of. And he was not <laughs> not really a good composer. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he knew it himself. Okay, uh, so anyway, so we've got uh, 12 major, 12 minor. Um, they are, let's, see, let's look at this minor major relationship real quick. What is A to C? How many half steps and in what interval? Roxanne's holding up three fingers. What what style of third? What style, Roxanne? What kind? What quality of third? Minor. It is a minor third relationship. Does that not make the most sense you've ever heard of in your entire life? It's a minor harmony that corresponds to a major harmony, and it's a minor third away, which is how we determine something is minor, because it's a minor third. So what, what is this? What is this? It's C major. How many sharps and flats in the key? None. 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 It's all the white keys. Now A minor. Three half steps down, minor third away. How many sharps and flats? None. 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 All white keys. Okay? So these are called relative. They're related because they both have the same key signature. In F major, we have one flat. And we in D minor, we have one flat. In B flat, we have two flats. In G minor, we have two flats. And so on. G major, we have one sharp. E minor, we have one sharp. So those are called relative. Uh, if that's confusing right now, don't don't worry about it. Okay, but here's what I want you to check out. So this is a color wheel, right? Take yourself back to middle school art class for a second. Green, oops, sorry, red and green. How are they related as colors? They are opposite. Opposite. What's the other word? In art, 
to say? Contrast. Contrasting. They're contrasting colors. Uh, red, yellow, and blue. What are those? Primary. Primary colors. Green, orange, we'll pick that one as orange, and purple are called, anybody know? Not primary. Tertiary, tertiary colors. Tertiary. As in, because they're blends of the primaries. Okay. Or sorry, secondary colors. They're called secondary colors. What's wrong with me? Primary, oh, secondary, and then tertiary are in here. These are the tertiary. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So why, why do you need to know yes. that? Yes, sir. What? Why? Why? You're going to hear it. So, um, <laughs> let, uh, so first off, the prime, primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, are all a major third away from each other. They turn this circle into a pie chart with three equal portions. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Same goes for the secondary colors. Purple, green, and orange are each a major third away. B flat, D, G flat, B flat, D, G flat. It's just a circle of major thirds. Same with the tertiary, okay? And then contrasting colors. Mm -hmm. Contrasting, what do you think? It means, uh, in color-wise, it means that they don't really blend well together. You mix them together, you get brown most of the time. <laughs> so I'm going to mix C major and F sharp major, both beautiful on their own. Okay, this is actually the harmony in Stravinsky's Petrushka. It's alternating between those two harmonies, F sharp and C major. And then uh, the other type of uh, color relationship is called um, adjacent, I think, or um, complementary. Complementary colors, is that right? Yeah. So then, so G, uh, sorry, uh, red and orange are right next to each other, so they sound good in succession, or mm -hmm. even together. And they're a, fifth, they're a fifth apart, right? They're a fifth apart. So together, this is G major and C major. They don't sound half bad together. F major and C major, same thing. Okay, so that's why it's uh, why the colors are so cool because they actually relate perfectly. There's also twelve keys, just like twelve uh, numbers on a clock, twelve months in the year. And they, as Steve said, they are all a fifth apart. So C to G is a perfect fifth, G to D is a perfect fifth, perfect fifth, perfect fifth, all the way around. Same with the minor chord. A to E, perfect fifth, E to B, perfect fifth. Also, Kismet, if it's confusing at all, to because you were giving me the confused look about the minor <laughs> chords. If you look here, we kind of have a we kind of have like a one one portion of the circle here, you know. See how there's C right here? Uh -huh. There's C over here. It's kind of like, it's been kind of like rotated like one of those, uh -huh. one of those uh, like decoders. Yeah. Ovaltine. <laughs> Make sure to drink your Ovaltine. Anyone know what that's from? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Charles, why, yeah. why it's confusing to me is like, why does, why does any of that matter in terms of, like we already have all this formula. I already have all the formula that tell me how to do a perfect fifth, yada, yada, yada. The visual doesn't help me. I'm seeing it all laid out? Yeah. Okay. Great. I have an answer for you. It's on okay. the next page. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's amazing, isn't it? You think like me. What is it? And why do I care? <laughs> the circle of eight, I mean fifths. Yeah. yeah. So if you were like me in school, uh, you were presented with that, but not in a very pretty color version. It was black and white. Very confusing. And why? Lots and of, no lots of flappy sharp drawn in there. And like, what the? <laughs> what? Yes, what's going on? Why are you giving me all the information all at once? How is this helpful to me? Excellent question. Thanks for asking. So I wrote these funny things today. I think they're pretty funny. It's like the periodic table of elements, but you want to know it. <laughs> it's like the quadratic equation, you remember from algebra, yeah. but you'll actually use it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a calculator. It's like E equals MC squared, but doesn't potentially contribute to the destruction of life on Earth. Aww. If you're aware of the atomic bomb, 
Yeah, so, so these are Charlesisms? <laughs> these are Charlesisms? <laughs> yes, they are. Okay. But uh, basically, I related it to, to science and math because it really is. It's music theory. Music theory is like a, it's an analytical device. Okay. And so what is the circle of fifths? But it's a way to present that information to you. But the cool thing is, it's not only is it a reference material, but it's also helpful for understanding how we arrive at 12 pitches in our scale rather than 13 or 20 or some other number. And then also it's useful in composition and understanding compositions, which you'll see. So like I said, I started writing here. It's fundamental to all genres and styles of music and used in almost all pieces of music. Now it's not used in uh, a way that, uh, the, the same way each time, but knowing where a chord can go and knowing that G is just one step away from C on the circle of fifths, but on the piano, it's a whole fifth away. So you think C to G, that's a big change, but in reality, it's not, it's a small change. Then you see C to F sharp or G flat, that's actually a smaller interval, but it's a much larger change in terms of the, the sound. So knowing that they're adjacent is really helpful. It, Before it, you go on, yeah. You said almost. So tell me when it's not used. Oh, most pop music. Most pop music doesn't use it. Well, I mean, it it exists. It's like saying, um, like you know, like I mean, it's like in chemistry. There's a there's always a chemical. Whatever you're looking at or whatever you're eating, there's multiple chemicals, many chemicals. So the periodic table is always being used. But in our day-to-day -day life, we're not using those unobinium, unotanium, uno, uh, all the ones at the bottom that are like chemical number 200,000. You know, we're not looking at those every day, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. So like, just like why, we don't see any, a lot of pop music written in C flat major unless they tuned it down for the singer and then it doesn't affect anybody because they just did that in a recording studio. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then common harmonic progressions are visible, like I was saying, C to G, C to F, and then it demonstrates the innate, innate presence of perfect fifths. So let's make one. Oh, so you gotta turn the page. Oh. Yeah. You can just start by drawing, drawing like that. Up some lines to bisect your pizza here. Oh, I think I did that wrong. I did that wrong. You probably know what I'm talking about. You have to do it in 12, right? Yeah, it's 12. So C is at the top, and then in uh, in minor, which is you'll put in the middle, it's A is A is the first. That's what that's so I just want you to start getting a few of them in here, but I, I have to move on because we're we're behind. We are behind. Because I asked you many questions. No. Nope. Sorry, but we'll wait. No, nope, because I didn't estimate time correctly. Because that never taught this. <laughs> no excuses, Carl. Just make sure you put your minor keys in lowercase, your major keys in uppercase. Okay. Or the spirits will visit you. Okay, and then fun fact, you can actually play the entire circle of fifths on your piano, your 88 key keyboard at home, starting with the lowest C. So let's all say the fifths. C, what's C. my next note? G. G. Uh, D. C sharp. Yeah. A flat. 
B flat, B flat, F, and C. That's right, the highest note on the piano. The piano is just three keys, three keys more than what can be demonstrated on the circle of fifths. It's kind of like an intestinal tract if you stretch it out. It's like, you know, 80 feet long or whatever, but in your body it's like all compact. That's my analogy. Is it, is it designed that way or is it? Is what designed that way? Is it designed to encompass the, you know, the circle of fifths, do you think? Or is it? The piano? Yeah. Like, oh, the tuning? Yeah. Well, it, the tuning is based around the perfect fifth, yeah. Right. And that's how we relate, uh, arrive to the 12 divisions. But it, uh, I can't answer in depth oh. about the, all the like intricacies of the tuning, because I just don't, I just don't know them. Okay. I audited that class, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I was doing my fifths, right? Yeah. And so when you come down the bottom and you get to B, the next fifth, I want, I, I wrote F sharp. So when I go back and look at the ring, it's not represented as F sharp, it's represented as G flat. Why is it flat instead of sharp? Uh, there, it's both. So you can write, at the bottom here, you can write F sharp slash G flat. Okay, so it's not wrong to put it in as F sharp. Yeah, it's okay. not wrong. I, I mean, I know you had us write that in. Right. Yeah, you can put it in as, as either. It's important to know that it's both. Oh, it's because every letter has both. Not every key. And here's here's why. How many letters are there in the musical alphabet? A through G. So, seven. seven. So we can only have a maximum of seven sharps in a key or seven flats. Because gotcha. we can modify each one, right? Yes. But as soon as you get past, you know, so I'm going to go over here. I've got G flat. I've got um, um, uh, uh, C flat and B. Yeah. As soon as I get over here, see how I've reached the C here? And I started with the C over here. So now you, that's your indication we've now Come gone to the way. limit. Because now if I go over here to... Um, sorry, doing, I keep having e. E, thank you. E, I can't call this F flat. And that's because over here I have an F. I can't have both an F. And an F flat. But, uh, you know what, actually, no, that's wrong, sorry. That's not why. That's not why. It, it, it really comes down to when you're forming the key signature. Because remember, you've got your you've got your alphabet, and you can add a sharp to each note. <laughs> and then you're done. You can't you can't go back over and add another one. But you can't do you can. Not in a key signature. Oh okay. Oh oh oh. Not in a key signature. Yeah. Yeah okay. Okay. The the question you really will ask yourself is. Why? Yes. <laughs> it's possible. Some modern composers have written key signatures that are like double sharp, double flat, uh, you know, not double sharp, sharp, flat. And my question is, yes. why? Because they overcomplicate it. That's kind of Because like they're that. overcompensating. <laughs> That's probably what it is. It, it is overcomplicating it. There's no reason. It's like when they put the tenor line in the double bow. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we gotta move on though. I'm sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. We're finishing up. Okay. John Coltrane's Giant Steps. Giant Steps. Giant Steps. Okay, so uh, take out your um, colorful circle of fifths. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. And just kind of. See if you can follow along with the chord changes. Just look at B major, D, G major, B flat. There's a few minor chords. There's A minor. Just circle the A minor, which is in the fourth measure, the F minor in the uh, seventh measure, four, eighth measure, sorry, and then another A minor at measure 10, C sharp minor at 12, F minor at 14, C sharp minor at 16. So you'll figure it out. Okay. Just to, to circle those so that you have them available so that you're not looking for those in the circle of fifths.
Because they are there, but they're in the gray. Okay. So I'll play this way under tempo. Okay, so I asked you to write about your goals in week two, 
And then I ask you in week one about your skills. Take a second to rate your skills now. Okay. Uh, please don't tell me that the number is lower. <laughs> Mark, has your skill gone up? No. Oh. Sorry. Okay. You mean because it was already at the max? It's already at 100%. How can you? <laughs> And then if you have any thoughts for the future of this class, please write them on the back of that sheet and, and I'll take that. Um, oh, there's no back in there. <coughs> Maybe craft me an email. My signatures don't scare me. <laughs> Mostly agree? I used to think of that shirt you used to wear, you'd wear around. These are difficult times, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Four four two two three Maybe four those kind of yeah. five four seven four nine eight. Yeah, probably. Well, let's nine. just say the basic ones. <laughs> <laughs> two four three four four four. four, four Maybe six eight. eight. What's the What's the one with the eleven? Eleven sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Middle Eastern music uses eleven sixteen and jazz. <clears throat> I'm not confident in playing it either, especially at higher tempos. <laughs> Great, we'll have a song they called the 11 and they only played it a couple times because they just said every time we had to re every time we went to play we had to relearn that damn time signature yeah yeah i mean it's all about counting right so then it's like you have to divide 11 into something so like it could be oh, five and six or right yeah or even smaller like right. one two three 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 one two